Good morning and welcome to Maynooth University's Virtual Open Day. The focus of this talk is on finance. My name is Dr. Thomas Flavin and over the next couple of minutes this brief presentation will seek to answer the following questions. We're going to start with what is finance? Then I will briefly talk about why you should consider finance as a career or at least as a subject that you could study in third level. We will talk more in depth about the career opportunities that a degree in finance will give to you. We will meet some of our graduates and show you the types of career that they are currently involved in. At this point we will then go into more detail on the finance programs. What are the best routes for you to study finance at Maynooth University? And we will finish the presentation by introducing you to some of the finance team, that is the people who will teach you and lecture you finance in Maynooth if you join us here to take a degree in the subject. So a very obvious place to start is what is finance? And finance is a field of economics that deals with the allocation and the management of financial resources over time. So in secondary school you probably don't have a subject that really matches finance. Some of you might have taken economics. The majority of you probably will not have taken economics. But that's not an obstacle. We teach all our courses here on the assumption that you haven't taken economics before. So you, we will teach you everything that you need that you need to know. Finance is sometimes confused with accounting and while there are some overlaps, for example, in finance we use a lot of data that accountants produce, but the two are, have many distinctions. To continue the theme of what is finance, well, finance is something that's all around us. It impacts on our daily lives. From the moment you have your first piggy bank, you're making financial decisions. So we make financial decisions as individuals, how we use our own money. We make finance decisions within the household. Should we buy the house? Should we rent the house? Financial decisions are a huge part of corporations. That is the firms, the companies that we see all around us. They have to make decisions on how to finance their operations. Whether they should expand, whether they should divest. These are all financial decisions. And of course, at a completely macro level, overarching everything, we have a government who have to make financial decisions. Should they increase taxation? Should they borrow more? Should they spend more on services? These are all the financial decisions that a government has to make. So therefore you can see that we are all used to dealing with money, sometimes as an individual and more times as part of a, a greater number like a household, a corporation or a government. But all of these institutions and individuals make financial decisions so therefore they need people with financial degrees. The sort of typical questions or issues that you would meet in finance would be what is the financial system and do we need banks? Why do we need banks? And basically the financial system is made up of different agents, people who want to borrow money, people who want to lend money, and banks act as intermediaries. They match these two together to give a, an efficient system so that people who want to save money can save in a bank and the bank can then lend that money out to people who need to borrow to finance projects, to finance the purchase of, of assets. As an individual, you would probably want to ask the question, should I consume my income or should I save some of my income? If you decide to save, then you would ask yourself the question, how should I invest? What type of assets should I hold? Should I put my money in the bank? Should I buy a property? 
Should I buy stocks or shares? These are the, the sort of issues that we want to deal with. As a corporation or as an individual who, wants to, who has a great idea to, to make a product, you might want to know how should I finance my project? Can I get a loan from the bank? Is there a more efficient, a more cost efficient way of financing the project? And finally, a big theme throughout finance is how should I manage financial risk? Many, because many of the decisions we make have implications for the future, they will also bear risk because we cannot forecast the future 100%. So therefore there will be risks and how we manage these risks will often be a major determinant in the success or otherwise of our financial projects. So why should you study finance? Well, at the end, we're going to talk about career opportunities, which I guess for most people will be the main focus. But as a general subject area, finance also has benefits, even if you do not see yourself having a career in finance, a basic knowledge of finance is very useful because you want to manage your own personal resources. How should I fund my education? Should I save more money now? Should I borrow money now? A knowledge of finance will also help you to deal with the world of business. So that when you go to the bank, when you approach the bank looking for a mortgage, when you approach the bank looking for a student loan, you can speak the same language. You understand what they're telling you. You're able to, to assess which loan is better than the, another for you. Likewise, it helps you to make informed public choices as a citizen. When politicians from one side or the other tell you what they're going to do when they get into government, are they going, are going to reduce taxes? Are they going to increase public spending? Well, if you studied economics and finance, you can weigh up the validity of these arguments and assess whether their promises are are, are possible or not. To expand your mind, finance is about problem solving. And while we deal mainly with issues about finance and about money, the techniques that you will learn within finance will also help you to solve problems in other areas. And we've often seen this, that our graduates go on to a variety of different types of career. Some not as mainstream as others, but they can do that because they have had this approach of solving problems. So let's look a little bit more at career opportunities. And these are the sort of typical opportunities, but are no way limited to this. As I say, many people use their finance to carve out completely different careers. But in the mainstream, we would be looking at banking. So uh, investment banking, retail banking, credit risk management. So the, the bank that you're used to seeing on the high street, this would be an example of retail banking. But there's others like investment banking. When it, wealthy individuals want to invest their money, most of them will go to a bank and they will go to an investment bank to do that on their own, on their behalf. All of the major banks will have credit risk departments. And these are basically the people who decide who gets a loan and who doesn't get a loan. Within an individual branch, people will be there to make decisions on mortgages. But for much larger loans, these will go to the bank's headquarters and to their credit risk management team. In Maynooth, a lot of our graduates go on to for a career in central banking and regulation. And the, the Central Bank of Ireland, for example, advises the government on economic policy. They interact with other central banks from the EU to set EU-wide policy. They look at the financial stability of the Irish banking system and make recommendations and rules for those banks to try to adhere to, 
to preserve the the stability of the entire system and the and the wider economy we have people who work in stockbroking and quants and these are basically the people who who buy and sell assets on their own behalf on behalf of wealthy individuals and on behalf of corporations we have risk managers we have corporate financial managers so every large corporation in the world across the globe will have a financial manager and these are the people who will decide how the firm basically progresses what they buy what they sell which projects they take on which projects they leave behind etc we have pension fund management pension funds are the largest investors in most western economies they collect the premiums from people who want to save for their retirement and then they invest these and how they invest these de really determines the success or otherwise of this of the entire pension fund and in the main they are the predominantly the group who buy and sell shares on the, on the stock exchanges hedge funds these are basically risk takers they there are private funds by and large and they take on risk to try to to maximize the return of the of the wealthy individuals who invest in these some people work in insurance some people work as forensic financial analysts what do i mean by that well most of the big online gaming companies or gamblers gambling firms bookmakers it's very important for them to de to detect fraudsters so they employ people with forensic financial analysts to try to detect patterns that may reveal that there is some inside information or some fraud being taking place on, on their markets. And finally, people stay within the field to do research. People like me, we go on in academics. People do this also in central banks across the world. And that is also a career that would be open to, to people in finance. So briefly, I'm going to present some of our graduates just to show you the type of career that they have. We begin with Dermot O'Leary. Some of you might have seen Dermot in the, in the paper. He writes regularly in the paper because he is the chief economist at Good Buddy Stockbrokers. And you can see a quote here from Dermot where he remembers fondly his time at Maynooth and how the lecturers were, were able to help him achieve his goals. Then we have Hannah Ryan, who went on to work as a consultant with Ernest and & Young. And she makes the good point that a good third level education will help you to get anywhere. It's a transferable skill. And finally here I have Stephen Moles, a graduate from 2012 who works as a senior financial consultant for a pension fund and again relates very positively with his time in, in Maynooth. What are the pathways open to you? Well, finance at Maynooth, you can follow three distinct routes. And I'm going to talk a little bit about all three, but I'm going to concentrate here on MH401. But you can also do it within the arts degree and this relatively new degree, which has a separate entry route, MH402. Just before I move on, MH401 will be explained to you in greater detail by others. But basically, you come in under an arts degree and you can choose up to four academic subjects. And one of these is finance. Now, if you want to do that, you will you can you can listen to the rest of this there are some similarities but as i said there are other videos that deal with that in more detail mh401 basically has a number of distinct pathways you can study for the ba finance and or the ba international economics and finance and within both of these degrees we offer single majors and major minor so the difference here with the single major you would basically study most of your time economics and finance with a major minor 
you would have two thirds of your time would be spent in economics and finance, and the remaining one third would be in another subject that you would choose in, in first year. Okay, it could be a language, it could be math, it could be whatever, whatever you, you like. There are some restrictions which we will lay out, but basically it's quite flexible. The BA International Economics and Finance, it, again, it takes on most of the economics and finance, but generally it requires you to either do a language or computer science. Okay. Now, for both degrees, the, fin the first year looks more or less the same. Finance and economics are major elements of your degree, and the study of finance itself begins in second year. Because first year, you take the principles of economics. Because it's very important for finance that you understand how markets work and how money and finance interact with a wider economy. So your, your subjects in first year would be in economics, in micro and in macroeconomics. And as I said before, both of these are taught on the assumption that you have not studied economics previously. So for example, the BA Finance, in first year you would take 15 credits of economics, that's basically two subjects, micro and macro. You would take seven and a half credits of accounting, and you would take seven and a half credits of mathematics. So 30 credits is compulsory. The re in each year you have to make up 60 credits. You would have the option to take another seven and a half credits of mathematics. And you would have the option to take another seven and a half credits of accounting. As I say here, it's optional but recommended because if you really, if you take 15 credits of accounting in first year and you've discovered that you really like it, then with this 15 credits of accounting, you could potentially transfer into the BA accounting and finance. You can also choose subjects including critical skills from the other arts groups, from groups one, two, and five. That would be explained to you at the beginning of the year. But the important thing here is that this would be the subject that would constitute your minor if you wanted to, to take that. So you could take basically a language, you could take math, you could take history or geography, whatever, whatever is your chosen field. The BA International Finance and Economics, well, this has 15 credits of economics, exactly the same as the BA Finance, and it also has 15 credits of mathematics. So you have to do 15 credits of mathematics here. Then you would choose one subject from, you can see there's a range of languages here, Chinese, French, German, and Spanish, or computer science. And then you can make up the rest of your credits from critical skills or other subjects. So the first year is quite, is quite flexible. The only thing to note here is the asterisk means that Chinese, German, and Spanish, these languages are taught from the beginning. So they are beginner's language programs available and you require 30 credits in the language, German or Spanish, and 15 credits in Chinese. Computer science may be taken as a single or as a double subject. So depending on how much of the of computer science you want to take on, you could do exactly the same first year as somebody taking a degree in computer science. Single major or major minor. Well, this is a decision that you don't have to make until the beginning of year two. But just to quickly run you through, what does it mean? A BF finance single major means that all 60 credits of your degree in year two and in year three would be basically in economics and finance with a, about a maximum of 10 credits that you could take in uh, electives. The BA finance major minor basically means that, as I've said before, you spend two thirds of your time doing economics and finance and the other one third in the minor, be it mathematics or the fourth subject that you would choose in year one. 
and the BA International Finance and Economics, well, this combines with mathematics or computer science or a language. So you have a lot of flexibility here. We choose, we recommend that you do as much mathematics and computer science as you can or as you wish, because these are really, there's a lot of synergy between finance and these subjects. Again, these are taught from scratch, so you don't have to necessarily have, there are some requirements for mathematics, but you don't have to, you will be, everything will be taught from scratch. Finally, we have a new degree, which is on the second, will be on the second year called the BSc Quantitative Finance. There is a separate video for the, that explains this in much more detail. A very quick overview is that it's a multidisciplinary program between economics and finance, mathematics and statistics, and computer science. It's more technical than the BA finance. There is a higher requirement for mathematics, but it is a degree that has been designed with employers in mind. So employers are crying out for people with finance degrees that have a good quants and mathematical background. And this degree is designed to give you those tools. Okay, in last year, the points to get into this degree were much higher than the BA Finance or the MH401 route, but it is something that you should consider. Finally, I'm going to end this presentation by just putting some faces to the people that will teach you in Menuth. So the finance team is made up of the following members. We have Dr. Fabrice Rousseau, who is the, the head of the group. He lectures uh, other things, but for example, fixed income markets. And his research interests are in market microstructure and IPOs. Then we have Professor Gregory Connor, with four decades of experience in academia and in the financial markets. He brings a wealth of experience he lectures derivatives, and his research interests include asset pricing and banking. I'm Thomas Flavin. I'm Associate Professor in Finance. I teach things like derivatives too. I study contagion, financial crisis, how they're transmitted across countries and across different markets. Then we have Dr. Thomas O'Connor, an Assistant Professor in Finance, whose main interests are in corporate finance and in emerging market finance. And he looks at the way emerging market financial firms finance themselves. That brings us to the end of my presentation. I thank you for the interest in watching this, for being interested in finance, and in particular in looking at Maynooth University. I wish you the best of luck in your studies, whatever you choose to do. But if you do choose to do finance, I recommend that you have a good long think about Maynooth University and the suite of programs that we offer. Thank you and best of luck.